so that's me off first kilometers in Australia um, along Mac Lake Macquarie. Bit out of breath. Haven't been cycling for uh, four days, five days, so need to get back into the rhythm again. But I had a bit of a cold, so it's good to rest for a couple of days. Welcome to Sydney, Australia, um, the next stop of my journey here and from here I'm going to cycle all across the country um, which is going to be a really long one to Perth. Um, I'm on the east coast right now and I'm going to be heading to the west coast. I'm going to be planning to go via Melbourne and Adelaide and another one then over to Perth. Sounds short but it's going to be a long long way. me is the Opera House um, and the Harbour Bridge and yeah really looking forward to that it's going to be a much much warmer one than the other cycles so far so I'm going to take plenty of water but whew, gosh first 50k are done and I need to readjust honestly after mainly off-road riding in New Zealand this looks like highway riding again but it's okay it's a really nice wide shoulder. I tried a side road to the National Park, um, which was Mission Impossible, because it was full of cars, absolutely no space for the bike. So. Just here in a bus shelter uh, in Kiama, which is um, somewhere south of Sydney, between Sydney and Nova, where I'm heading today. I must say, um, start of Australia hasn't been quite. Um, the traffic here, um, nothing really to look forward to. Um, it's quite a hostile attitude of the drivers sometimes. Not not a lot of them, but just a fair few of them, um, which don't really make it fun cycling here. But I guess it's the first two days, which are always a bit rocky. Australia, mixed feelings about it, to be honest with you right now. Um, but it's also quite difficult after New Zealand, which has really set the mark. But so far it's raining as well. <laughs> it's the country where I would have at least expected rain, but it's raining. So hopefully, hopefully, Australia is going to get better. I'm pretty sure it will. Um, people here, a lot of the people are really friendly. I'm quite curious as well, and um, I'm just going to give it a second chance and, and see how it goes. I think I've just found my cycling mojo back here. My first proper beach in Australia, Seven Mile Beach, which is, oh, it looks seven miles long. If you look up there, it's a long, long sandy beach. I'm just heading into Nova now, big river. to leave Nora with Russ who I stayed with last night. Say hello Russ. <laughs> and Craig. <laughs> yeah I had a beautiful time here in Nora. Nora has loads of bike packing um, and I'll be heading into the mountains now and it's wonderful here. Such a change from yesterday and the day before. No traffic. The odd car. Cycling today here bank country of Australia it's just just amazing and it's yeah it's quite quite roads and it's really quiet here and the views are pretty amazing so I'm really enjoying this I'm here at almost 800 meters now so a bit of climbing today from 0 to 800 um, travel road in Australia looks slightly different from the New Zealand ones but Great day riding today, and this is a bit more adventurous here than on the Tar Sealed Road. So, first night ride since a long time. Um, I'm just on my way to a campsite, um, Major's Creek, um, because Braidwood was nice but quite expensive to stay in. Brilliant day today, 
I'll end up with I think almost 180 kilometers today which which I didn't expect to do but um, yeah wonderful day three and yeah hopefully there's not gonna be any dangerous animals tonight camping I think I'm on top of the snowball road right now just had to navigate around the snake a black snake which was um, sunning itself on the path um, or on the road Um, fantastic riding here. If you look at the forest, the scenery is amazing. I made it, Pike Saddle, 1,232 meters. That's the highest I've been um, ever since I left California, actually. Dramatic change of scenery here. Um, on the last kilometers to Kuma, this very much looks like the Scottish Islands again um, from the lush green forest um, back into barren fields, as you can see. So interesting interesting region here wonderful start to the morning here with this view from mount gladstone which is at 1077 meters it was a bit of an exercise to get up here on a single speed quite a steep climb but i had some kangaroos hopping next to me and over the street so it was good entertainment and just enjoying the views from here it's 80 degrees in the morning but it's warmed up now properly it's hard work in the sun and in the heat Just entering um, Mount Kosciuszko um, National Park. Good news is bikes are free. <laughs> Cars have to pay $17, so um, that's half of my hostel already. <laughs> so wonderful, wonderful cycling here. Hard work, big hills, um, and I have a lot of climbs today already. So just to the top here of Prepper Village. You know, the problem with scenic villages is they usually come with really steep streets and that comes with problems with single speed, so I'm not good. <laughs> Made it to the top, 1580 meters, that's high, that's much, much higher than I've been in New Zealand. Um, crazy riding range, hopefully it's a little bit more downhill from there. Just arrived at my campsite here and everything's full of kangaroos here. <laughs> really amazing. Good entertainment for the evening. Early start, um, just made myself a coffee and it's absolutely stunning here and you can see that it's pretty cold actually outside um, because the water in the river is much warmer. <laughs> This is an amazing spot. Everything's full of kangaroos here. 10 a.m. I'm back on the bike here. It's absolutely stunning here. Love cycling here. It's pretty amazing. This is hard work here. <laughs> the Alpine Way. I don't know if I've been on a more hillier route than this one. Uh, certainly not on a trail. Up and down all the time. Sometimes it's good not to know elevation profiles. <laughs> I'm more than a thousand meters now. I wouldn't have thought that I'd have to climb so high today, but hey ho, it's beautiful. But this road is possibly one of the hardest I had so far. Just climbing out of the snowy mountains, which are almost behind me now. <laughs> um, this has been the most wonderful region so far to cycle in Australia. Get about an hour left till sunset beautiful ride i decided to carry on this evening because there's a forest campsite not far away from here now i think today has been a typical market day um, i was struggling through the day on the alpine way there was so much climbing in there there was even a bit too much for my liking and i thought i'm gonna call it a day in Koweyong, but then 
had a oh, almost a kilogram of strawberry yogurt um, and the pear and went to the first campsite, didn't really like it. The second one felt like, you know what, I can carry on. It's such a nice evening to ride. So here I am, oh, about 10 kilometers out of the campsite. So I'll end up having 125 kilometers again on the clock, just cycling on the High Country Rail Trail, which goes past this totally surreal like you with all wooden well, with all trees kind of stuck in the lake. Uh, just leaving Beechworth. Uh, hard work to get up here. Who would have thought that it's at 550 meters altitude? <laughs> I'm back on a cycle trail now. Um, my way to mountains. And this is an old rail trail again, so it's going to have a, a gentle gradient. So I've done 110k already today. I guess I've got another 40 or 50 to go um, and I'll see where I'm going to end up tonight. Downhill! Yippee! Hope it's like this for the rest of the 40 k's here. It's a pretty ropey night. Um, I'm heading down towards Glen Rowan. Finale. Tried to get here last night but my tire decided otherwise so I had to stay in the campsite it's a bit expensive not just a bit it was quite overpriced for what it was um, and it's really hot as well in the evening so I couldn't really sleep so today this seems a bit easier than what I had yesterday so that should be fine thanks so much to Flick this is amazing. Look, and I'm eating it in front of a typical Australian sign. A kangaroo. Mm. I'm pretty sure the kangaroos would love that as well. Mansfield, yay! I'm tired. We've washed, ready to go here in Mansfield. Um, stayed at the Mansfield Backpackers Lodge and it's a brilliant place to chill out. It's wonderful. Great kitchen, great bed. Um, so I'm good to go now. I've got about 145 kilometers to go, which is a long way for today again. So, gotta get cracking and get down towards Melbourne. Great day for riding today. Um, back on another rail trail. This time the Great Victorian Rail Trail, which will take me from Mansfield um, westbound first and then south towards Melbourne. Um, I'm not heading all the way into the city today. Um, that's what I'm gonna do tomorrow. Um, but yeah, this is fantastic riding here, absolutely stunning. This is where I ended up today. <laughs> In a bakery <laughs> with Ian, who is making fantastic bread, and it tastes amazing as well. The food bread is amazing. Mm. Really good. Um, how long have you been making bread, Ian? Uh, about 22 years here, self-employed. Yeah. Cool. And um, how, how many how many breads a day do you make? Uh, like this? Up, to, up to about 200 loaves. Okay. Yeah. Cool. 100, 180 to 200 usually. And. Um, you do various different breads as well, yeah? This yeah, we do about uh, four different types. Like okay. Tartars, fruit breads, seeded sourdoughs, and a plain sourdough. Cool, awesome. And where, where can people get your bread? Uh, just locally. We don't supply, yeah, we don't go very far from home actually. So in the Yarra Valley, pretty much, is there where we supply. Bakery talking about bike packing as you can see and there's one special loaf in the oven which is just about ready. Yay 
what a wonderful night I had. Um, baking bread, drinking beer, and now I'm loaded up with some amazing bread from Ian and Linda, uh, making my way into Melbourne today. So it's been a wonderful, wonderful experience. So this is what I love about the trip, meeting new people. That's almost it for today. Tough, tough and tougher. Um, the heat was immense. Imagine sitting in a sauna on a turbo trainer um, with a ventilator in front of you that blows all the warm air into your face or behind your neck. So this is how I felt today. It was incredible. <coughs> hot, really hot. I'm just rolling down here from us. Um, which is 305 meters was quite a high point and it's going to be a really really windy road coming down the views are absolutely breathtaking here talking about scenery this is what it looks like so pretty amazing here um, absolutely breathtaking and I'm looking forward to um, cycle halfway around today 14 and a half thousand kilometers which I will be cracking today hopefully if I don't break down so yeah special day today lunch here with Ian's tasty bread and a lot of seagulls. Last tonight I stayed with Mel and Mel is a primary, no, a grammar school teacher at Mentoli Girls Grammar School which I got to visit today which was amazing so um, I'm just gonna run past them and yeah <laughs> it was great to meet all of those kids here. I'm halfway around the world, 14 and a half thousand kilometers. Woohoo! Somewhere in Melbourne, or close to Melbourne. Pretty indescript place, but I'm super chuffed with that. down towards Bourbon City here. Absolutely amazing evening for riding and the cycling just all along the beach is brilliant. Early morning ride here through Melbourne to get the commuter cycles to fit a new book bracket. Um, wonderful city, really enjoy it. Um, it's also quite nice to go to the hustle and bustle of the early morning traffic. So yeah, Melbourne is, is pretty amazing for cycling and as a city as well, so I'm really enjoying it here. So I'm here at Commuter Cycles in Melbourne with Will. Will, say hello. Hi. <laughs> and Jed. Jed. <laughs> and Todd who is finally putting a new bottom bracket in the bike which had made some made some squeaking noises all the way down here so finally getting rid of those. And as Lee. a counter, Lee. Lee. Yeah. Pretty cool bike shop. If you come to Melbourne that's the one to go to. Yeah. The cool thing is they have um, a thing here where they can actually measure customers and give them the experience to ride a bike and Bill's gonna tell us a wee bit more about it. Mm. Um, yeah, so this is our bike fitting bike. Um, we've got a measurement down here which measures the stack um, and then using a laser we can work out the reach. So using the geometry charts from the Surleys um, such as there, we can use these geometry figures to replicate the frame size on this fifth bike. We can have a go, have a pedal. The stem here is also adjustable so we can work out what sort of stem length they might need change the handlebars around to give them a feel of what different bars feel like. So we basically custom fit them to a bike before the bike arrives for them and then they can get on the bike and it's going to fit them properly straight out of the box. So very useful. Um, the cranks also 
can be changed in length, so anywhere between 165 and 185, we can actually change the crank length depending on how tall the person is as well. So. Amazing, yeah, and they also got, uh, they've got basically all I'm riding on the bike, so yeah. um, if you if you ever come to Melbourne and you're cycle touring around the world or you're just doing Australia or just a little bit, give them a, check it out, they've got pretty, pretty good stuff here in the store and they're really friendly people as well, so. Thank you, Will. They fixed my bike today, so it's not creaking anymore, which is good news. Bracket. Yay, yay, yay. yay. Not fall off. <laughs> I know, so <laughs> yeah, pretty good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Cycling to Melbourne here. I think I'm in love with this city. And the people are quite from the guys I met in the bike shop. Uh, Takira and David I stayed with. And a few other people I talked to on the street, um, really friendly people. And I'm just about to head off to check out some coffee um, and some cake and some hot chocolate maybe. So yeah, Melbourne, if you tour around Australia, make sure you spend at least a day in Melbourne. 